Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and in this video, we're breaking down episode 6 of Gen V. The latest entry might make you wonder what's going on, but in this video, we're going to explain everything to take you out of those shades of Jean Grey. There's lots of Easter eggs, comic book callbacks, and things you missed in it, plus a cameo that was like ruined four weeks ago on social media, but we're here now to talk about it all. Heavy spoilers ahead, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, then I highly recommend that you check out now. If you enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. Without the way, huge thank you for clicking this, now let's get into Gen V. Now we begin with Kate making Emma remember everything. We can catch her bloodshot eyes, which may be a nod to what happens to the psychic when their powers overload in Firestarter. This is also a subtle way to show when Kate's powers have been used, and if we go through the season, there's several moments where she'd clearly been overdoing it. Now when we cut to the wider shot, we can catch Marie standing in front of a girl's get it done poster. This still contains Storm for an on it, but she was eventually cast with Charlie's throne once the truth about her got out. Up next to Jordan, we can also see the no looky lose sign that popped up at the start of episode 2. Around the room, there's several Dawn of the Seven posters, including character ones from Starlight and Black Noir. We also get a shot of Emma standing by an American flag, though this may also be Homelander's cape. Now Kate starts to collapse due to her powers overloading, and it even seems like she reads Marie and Jordan's mind. Why did she do this to us? I'll never forgive for this. As we see throughout the episode, she's way more powerful than we ever suspected, with her very much being a reality warper, just like how Wonder is. Jean Grey also feels like she's a basis for the character too, with us getting several nods to the X-Men throughout. Upstairs we then see Andre in a room with a neon phoenix sign on the wall, which could be a nod to Jean Grey's persona. This is actually where we saw the fire breather last week, and just below the coffee table we can catch a can of Turbo Rush. I'm guessing that's getting mixed with vodka at the party, um, I'm a bit hungover myself today, so seeing, seeing everyone here, I, I could relate to it a bit. Now he believes that Kay convinced Luke to kill Brink, and thinks she had a similar plan for him. Marie's also starting to regret what she wished for, as she thought joining God Yu was the best day of her life. However, it's not all it's cracked up to be, and it's using the students to further its own ends. After catching Kate going into a seizure, we see as the world's transformed around them, with her sucking them into her subconscious. Also love how just before it kicks off, Marie asks Jordan if they know CPR. You learned CPR? Where? At superhero school? Jesus! Obviously, you'd expect them to be learning how to save lives at superhero school, but th this place is more about branding and appearing like a hero rather than actually being one. This is something Andre deals with with his dad because he realises that he's not really a hero. Now we cut across to the woods where we see a prisoner called Betsy that has electrical powers. These manifest similar to Electro's, with them being goal-like as more comic accurate depictions. Betsy also has a name that you only ever really hear comic characters have, with Betsy Braddock being the first one that springs to mind. Sorry if you're called Betsy and you're watching this, but you, you know what I mean. It, it's not, I'm not saying it's old fashioned. Don't hit the thumbs down mate, come on, it, it, there are comic characters where Betsy's a name either. Either way, we find out the virus is attached to V, and that it's attacking the cells and making her sick. Kadosa has it ready to sign off, but Shetty would rather concentrate the dose and make her feel sicker. Now I feel like with it being related to blood, that the plans to use Marie as someone that can spread it. This would mean that they have a way to wipe out every soup on the planet and take characters like Homelander down if he goes rogue. It's something that Vaught would be interested in, as they're pretty much at the whims of them being well behaved. I feel like making soup sick isn't something Marie would sign up for though, and that's the part where Kate comes in. She's already under Shetty's control, and Shetty could tell Kate to tell Marie what to do. Now back with Kate, we see Dusty come in, and shout out to this guy, he's wearing a berserk shirt. Now she ends up seemingly teleporting out of there, but instead, it's clear that this is actually her mind. Making the wall fall apart, they all step outside and see that they're all trapped in an illusion. This takes them out into the woods, which is metaphorically building off the back of the experiments. However, it's also because this is a defining moment for Kate, as it was when her family fell apart. In the comics, Kate would be classed as an Omega level threat, which is someone that would be in extreme danger to humanity. Maybe the virus is even to control her, but she has the potential to do a lot of damage. Now, in case you haven't read House of M, that's probably the quintessential Wanda Maximoff story. Though she doesn't feature in it too much, it does showcase what happens when her full powers are unleashed. Now in the aftermath of Avengers Disassembled, the Avengers decided that it was just safer to kill her. Travelling out to Genosa, she reacts badly to it and transforms the entire world into one where mutants are the dominant species. 
This has got humanity on the back foot, and they could even do something like that with the soups. In the comics, they wanted to take over the world, and reversing things like that would, of course, cause it to happen. So it's reasons like that that she has to stay on top, and we see the first-hand damage that her powers have caused. Out in the woods, we see Kate's mother looking for her brother Caleb, and we learn in episode 3 what happened with him. Kate told him to walk into the woods, and unfortunately, he never came back. Kate's mother's blamed her for this ever since, and we have this idea of bad parents laced throughout the show. As we know, they were the ones who gave their kids V, and this was so they could become soups. The kids themselves, though, they never got a choice, and they've been forced into this life of trying to be a superhero. The only choice they have is to go and work for Vought, or get shipped off to somewhere like Elmira or Sage Grove. Though they're powerful, they're completely powerless, and it's purely down to their parents' choices. Now this scene also reminded me a lot of the one from X-Men Apocalypse where we see Magneto's family getting killed in the forest. At this point we get a soldier boy cameo who's once more played by Jensen Ackles. When we saw him last he was being put under sedation but here we have Kate's manifestation of him. Turns out he was her imaginary boyfriend and he goes into pretty deep detail about what she used to get up to. Luke was of course the number one at school so it does make sense that she'd also gravitate towards him. Hell, both of them self-destructed, and there are possibilities that his powers mutated to be in line with what we saw. Andre says that he's a Russian agent, and we discovered he'd been experimented on by them during Season 3. This was clearly riffing on the Winter Soldier, with him also of course being a Russian sleeper cell. He's freaked out by being called a Russian, and he was of course about during a time with the Red Scare in America. Communists were put on trial, and the man just goes off on them. I fart the Star Spangled Banner. You're pretty fucking weird, dude. Yeah? Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck your face. Now we learn the lightning strikes of blood vessels bursting, and every time she uses her power, we of course see this happening on her face. Soldier Boy goes to warn them something really important, but man is mashed up and left in a pile of ash. I was wondering if this was a play on his death in the comics, as he does get brutally killed in that too. Now in the real world we get to Emma meeting with Sam who's eating out of some Vought-tot twists. They have the puppet version of the deep on them which explains where his visions come from. To the left is a payback movie poster and as Sam and Emma reunite we see a games machine with Polarity's Magneto machine. Guessing that's as close as we're going to get to them out and out saying Magneto and like him he is a master of magnetism. Now Sam's never lost that V card because he's been stuck in the woods all that time but Man needs no help finding his way about the bush. Emma actually gets to be with someone who wants to be with her instead of having to shrink down. However, he does see her as a puppet. And we, when we see that hand smack against the glass, it kind, kind of brings back memories of Titanic. Now, as they make their way through the woods, they come across a reconstruction of Kate's room. In it, we see a post of a soldier boy and Crimson Countess, possibly explaining where she got her crush from. There's also a Countess poster on its own who was based on Scarlet Witch and having this in Kate's room, yep, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. If you look closely, you can see that it says Whiskey Sunshine, which is also riffing off the film Tequila Sunrise. There's the Queen Maeve one there too, with that riffing off the first Wonder Woman film. Now as we can see, she's got a reinforced store with her mother, basically keeping her in prison for nine years. Shetty's the first person who seems like she's not afraid of her, and Professor X and Magneto used to do something similar when meeting students. Kind of felt like this built off the back of the scene that opened X-Men The Last Stand, with Shetty also offering a way to make the voices stop. She doesn't go out and visit every single student, which we, we saw with Kate, so her doing this here shows that Kate's very special. Now her reading the minds at the start is what made her pass out, and obviously she needs to be kept under sedation. Not doing this could bring the entire world crashing down, and the virus may have even been invented specifically for her. I actually think that she might be the most powerful soup we've ever met in the series, and she has the potential to burn down everything. Now we see the first meeting she and Luke had, with Andre bearing the guilt over taking his girl in his death. Luke confronts him, and we learn that Andre and Kate have actually been getting it on for a while now, which shows that he's not the good guy he portrays himself as. Striking out and killing dust in the group then flee into the school and this is because they are unable to use their powers. They run through the Brink's office and we see a confrontation in which Luke had once more remembered his brother. Rather than helping her friend though, Jordan ended up making him pass out which allowed Kay to then erase the memory and keep it covered up. He gives an inspirational speech to Jordan similar to what he gave to Marie and offers them the position of TA in exchange for keeping quiet. The whole school's keeping things hush hush and we also learn that Brink's been augmenting Golden Boy. This is how he catapulted up to number one and Brink said he wanted him to be Homelander strong. 
The woods definitely seems like a place where they're trying to build the ultimate super weapon and that can take down any of the soups that might stand up against them. A Jordan saved their own arse instead of saving their friend and they sided with Brink just because he was nice to them. I think these are showing the defining moments when they could have been heroes but really they're hypocrites that screw over their friends. The only people who seem happy are Sam and Emma but I feel like the pair are completely doomed. He's a fugitive and she's gonna have to choose whether she wants the popularity or to go on the run. The pair talk about how they wish they could stay there forever, which again might be a play on the love scenes from Titanic. Either way, Emma says no more running and we cut from a bird's eye view shot of them lying down to the rest of the group passed out. Cutting to the woods, we see that Brink isn't really juicing Luke and he's got him passed out and doing what looks like blood transfusions. We discover that the school was using sound to boost Luke's powers and this may have even been the strategy before they developed the virus. What they needed as a way to stop the rogue soups and having the most powerful one under their wing would be a way to carry that out. Homelander was born in a lab and they likely know that he had Edgar ousted. Thus, they need to bring them down and we later discover that Shetty completely hates them. Kate was on standby to make him forget and we see all the times he came close to remembering and she took the memories away. This clearly pushed Luke over the deep end and this is what ended up shoving him over the edge. Kate's known as a pusher and she pushed him towards his own death which makes the scene just become really cold blooded. Now we see as the school cracks and crumbles around them and I feel this might be foreshadowing of what's going to happen in the season. I might be wrong but there's so many hints towards it and the woods could bring the entire thing crumbling down. Now finally they head up Marie's where we see the aftermath of her killing her parents. Seeing her sister, she apologises for destroying their family, but in reality, it wasn't really her fault. Marie was given V without the choice, and her parents did this just to make money. Marie uses this to show Kate that it isn't really her fault, and that all of them are messed up because of their parents' choices. Going back to her room, Andre talks her out of it, and she finally wakes up. Reminded me a lot of the end of Inception with them finally managing to get out of the dream and though they question their reality, the, the powers still work. At this point Sam and Emma arrive and as the former recognises her, he then goes on the attack. However, he decides to spare her and do the right thing and just like the rest of the group, he's starting to become a hero. Now the words we see the virus is actually capable of killing the soups and though Kadorsa's gutted, Shetty's over the moon. She now wants to find a way to turn it contagious, which actually kind of plays into a storyline at the end of the comics. Now we'll be talking about what happens in those furs, but I just want to drop my thoughts on the episode and then we'll get into what happens there. You really want to live, then the single most important thing I can tell you is... Anyway, I think that this was one of the standout episodes that when you think back on the series, this is going to be one of the concepts that first springs to mind. Going into a hero's head and discovering their trauma through their memories is such a cool creative concept and it also worked as a way to give us lots of big reveals. On top of that, you had the cameos from people like Soldier Boy which added a lot to it. This was basically Kate's backstory laid out in such a cool fashion and it was a really creative way to tell us about how everything happened. It also showed why she's desperate to be accepted because she's been shunned by even her own family for something she can't help. Really enjoyed it and you can see the show starting to mount up with Shetty's plot. We still don't know who Marie's benefactor is and I have seen some comments saying that it might even be Shetty herself. That could be the case but I kind of think that she would be the one to go out and get Marie specifically if that was true. Either way, really great entry and as for how this could all be playing out, we will be going into comic spoilers so if you don't want to know what happens then please check out now. Giving you another countdown again. We're not doing it just to boost the, the watch time on the video. We're really serious about this stuff. Um, so in the comics, Homelander ended up causing a soup uprising and he stormed the White House and killed Vic the Veep. Vic was the president at this point, so he wasn't technically the Veep. Um, but he was also a vault plant as well, possibly showing what's going to happen with Victoria. But she went in to take him out and at this point Black Noir emerged and revealed himself to be a clone of Homelander. He'd been created to be someone that could bring Homelander down if he ever went rogue and now he was finally getting to live out his purpose. They could do something like this in the series too with the next Black Noir being a version of Homelander. Now Noir killed him, he finally took him out and then Noir died at the hands of Butcher. Butcher still had a vendetta against the soups though and he put in place a plan to take them out once and for all. Going to the top of the Empire State Building he was going to set off a radio frequency that caused the V within soups to make their heads explode. This is something that happened earlier in the comics and it would take them out once and for all. 
Now Butcher ended up kind of wanting Huey to stop him, which is the main reason that he hired him. He wanted someone at his side who would rein him in, which Huey did, and in the end he saved the soups. We saw a great reform in them, and ultimately in the end that they all became better. Now I think the virus will sort of be worked into it like that, and we might even get pandemic illusions with it being something that makes the soups ultimately start to act better. Because hum humanity acted better off the, the pandemic, didn't we? Um, and while that might not happen, I think the virus itself could be something Butcher may weaponize down the line. Potentially even Vault will, but it's clearly playing into the overall boy's story, and I'm guessing it's going to be very important down the line. Anyway, that's our thoughts on it, and make sure you leave yours below. Please drop a like on the video, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. You get early access to videos every week, and it goes such a long way to helping us make these. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch, we've also got our t-shirt line located just below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our Theory Time one, House of Dragon stuff, Marvel tees, and a lot more. We drop new designs on there all the time too, so definitely keep an eye out for them. Now if you want something else to watch, we've got a video on screen right now. Without the way, huge thank you for sending through the video. I've been your host Paul, and I'll see you next time. You take care, peace.